Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Advent Lutheran Church on this Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, it's good to see you all. A uh, couple brief announcements. Uh, first off, after our worship service this morning, uh, we have our annual meeting uh, immediately after worship. Uh, so please stick around for that. Um, uh, there'll be a, so when worship ends. There is uh, stuff for fellowship, so you can go get coffee, some cookies, whatever. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a space between the end of the service and the start of the meeting, but please stick around. So get yourself some refreshments, take a deep breath, and then come back in the sanctuary, and we will start our annual meeting. Um, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Uh, we are going to have uh, a 12 o'clock and a 7 o'clock Ash Wednesday service. Uh, I, we haven't had a noon service before. We're going to give it a try and see who's interested and who shows up. Um, hopefully uh, uh, that time works well for some folks. Uh, and then continuing into Lent, um, we will be having midweek Lenten services. Uh, we'll begin with a soup supper at 6 o'clock and then a worship service at 7 o'clock. Um, uh, so we can look forward to that, and that will be in person here at the church. Uh, we'll have uh, Zoom up as well. We'll, we'll put it on, on uh, social media as well, so you can follow along at home, uh, at least with the worship service. Be difficult to do that for the soup supper. Uh, if, I mean, you may be into watching other people will eat soup. Um, <laughs> <laughs> soup voyeurism of a sorts. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we won't be doing that for the soup supper. Um, and the theme that I've chosen for the season of Lent for Sundays and for the midweek services is prayer. Um, and the midweek services will be about opening ourselves up to God. Um, so that's the theme for the midweek Lenten services. Um, all our activities, ping pong, stitch club, um, uh, Sunday school. There is Sunday school tonight at 6.30. Uh, all our ministries are happening. So please read your bulletin uh, in regards to all those things. Um, uh, Lutheran World Relief, um, which we... Uh, uh, one of the ministries that we contribute to and support uh, uh, is taking collections to help those in Ukraine. Uh, so if you would like to donate, uh, to give, to help folks in Ukraine during this, this, this horrible time with uh, the Russian invasion, uh, please, uh, you can write a check, put cash, right on the envelope, Lutheran World Relief Ukraine and we will make sure that that gets to Lutheran World Relief. Uh, at the moment, uh, Lutheran World Relief is not able to enter the country to help. Um, they're waiting, uh, they're trying to coordinate with uh, uh, multiple governments to help them do that, uh, and especially through our government, the US government, but they anticipate that need. And they know the people that are going to need aid uh, and they are asking for funds at this time so that they have those funds in hand when they're able to get into Ukraine to help folks out. Uh, so uh, please um, give generously to that. Um, any other announcements that need to be made? Uh, we are having communion this morning with the self serve communion kits. If you didn't grab one on your way in, our illustrious council president, George, uh, will be happy to bring one around to you. Just raise your hand. All right then. Oh, if you bought Girl Scout cookies or signed up to buy Girl Scout cookies last week, I brought those. They're in a bench in the uh, fellowship area over there. Uh, if you already paid, Take your cookies. If you haven't, there's a money envelope. Uh, and uh, Debbie's girls, Rachel and Emily, have sold out of cookies at this time. So unfortunately, can't have you sign up for it anymore. So um, there, that's it. Uh, 
Without further ado, let us begin our worship service with the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on the first page of our bulletin. Please rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoicing in this, rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 
The first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 34. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone, because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Here ends the reading. We will now read responsively from Psalm 99. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. The the Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord, great in Zion, is high above all people. Let them confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. The mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among your priests and Samuel among those who call upon the name of the Lord. They call upon you and you answer them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept your testimonies and the decree that you gave them. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship upon God's holy hill, for the Lord our God is the Holy One. Here ends the reading. The next reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Since then, we have such a hope. We act with great boldness, not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. 
And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly, a spirit seized him, and all at once he shrieked, it convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the greatness of God. Here ends the reading. The Gospel of the Lord. All right, is that better? All right. Sometimes it takes time to really sink in. That there are things that happen in life that mark us. Uh, things that, that can be astounding, can be incredible, can be joyous or, or sad or traumatic, definitive moments in our lives that when they happen are incredible and outstanding in our lives in the moment they happen and, and we may recognize that in the moment, but even so, the, the effect, the ripple effect of that event in our life can ripple the further away we get from that moment, and that it, it can take time to fully realize the importance of that moment. Examples. A wedding day. Um, the birth of a child. Graduation, 
um, retirement. Um, landing a new job. Um, a diagnosis. And, and these are all life transitional moments. Uh, and often in these moments, there's the moment itself, you know, all the things we normally, as I said, each of those events, there's, there's you know, like with, with uh, a wedding or the birth of a child, you see either a church or a wedding venue or a hospital or whatever. Uh, but uh, that, that can be common to all of our experiences uh, but often it's, it's more than just, you know, the hospital, the wedding venue, or whatever. It's, 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 it's the interactions that happen with the people at that time. Um, maybe something someone said to you that creates that ripple effect. That when we're, we're in the moment, we're spellbound, we're astounded by the magnitude of the entire event and its impact upon us. But, but as that event unfolds in our life, uh, there's the smaller details that, that initially in that moment or the next day or for the next week kind of escapes the attention because you're so astounded by how incredible the entire experience was. But it isn't until months or even years down the road that the words of somebody in that moment or something that happened that seemed trivial or unnoticed in the moment was actually an incredible coincidence that happened in that moment. That the ripple effect, the impact, carries on down through the years. And it doesn't have to be these life stage moments either. Um, a key moment for me uh, kind of a, a mountaintop, astounding moment um, for me th that's personal was the first time I cried as an adult saying goodbye to someone. It was a moment that was profound when it happened for me and has had a ripple effect. I mean, and it, I, I know that might not sound quite as, as, as extraordinary as some of those life transition moments, but for me, it was a big deal. When I was growing up, my family moved around often. By the time I left my parents' house, we lived in, I think, seven different places that I remember being most of those moves while I was in grade school on up. And so I, I kind of almost as a way of, you know, especially the, the couple of moves, the two moves, we're, we're only in a place for about a year, year and a half. You know, you get to a new school, you meet a bunch of people, you make friends. And then I ended up having to say goodbye to folks and then have to go through that again. That almost like a defense mechanism. I, I stopped, I, I like the, 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 the grief, the, the hurt, the, the saying goodbye kind of just, you know, pushed that down. I, I had this protective barrier in place. And, and, and so saying goodbye to people I wouldn't let myself get sad. I wouldn't let myself cry. I wouldn't let myself mourn. It was odd because if I watched a movie about two people saying goodbye to each other and they might not ever see each other again, I would get teary-eyed over the movie where people were saying goodbye. But if it was me actually in the moment saying goodbye, I, I wouldn't tear up. I wouldn't feel anything. And the first time, and it was almost four years ago, someone dear to me, a friend that I had made, and I said goodbye, and I cried. It was incredible. It was just this release. It was something, it hit me. It was just, 
it kind of shook my world in that moment. I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday. Like, I had to, after the person left, like, I had to go put myself together. And I'm like, what on earth just happened to me? <laughs> what just happened to me? Like, it was out of the blue. Like, it was just, it just was striking. It was, it was an epiphany. But the ripple effect of that, the ability to connect with folks and to feel deeply towards those around me and, 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 and to not have pent up grief when saying goodbye to folks. And I've had to say goodbye to some folks since then. The treasuring of connections with those around me. Staying in touch with people. Part of the thing of not being able to say goodbye or to mourn is I didn't stay connected to people in the past. That those relationships don't always necessarily have to end and be cut off, that you can maintain. It was a new thing for me. Powerful stuff. Bringing greater joy to life. Have you ever had something happen in your life where, where the full impact of that moment has a ripple effect? And sometimes we need time to process it, to fully know the gravity, the weight, the power of that moment. With Jesus' transfiguration, with Moses and Elijah there, Jesus' disciples, James, John, and Peter, it is an incredible experience. It blows their minds to see Moses and Elijah there, to see them transfigured, to see them dazzling white, to hear the voice of God. It takes time for it to sink in. On one level, it may seem odd that when they came back down the mountain, they didn't talk about it. They didn't share this experience with any of the other disciples. I mean, you know, if something wonderful happens, don't you just share it with everybody? I imagine them almost in a state of shock, just struggling to process all of it, to absorb it. But we know about it today because they wrote about it. They did talk about it. They didn't write about it. The story didn't get right down in the gospel until much later. But they eventually did talk about it after the resurrection, that they were able to put the pieces together. Oh, this moment of the transfiguration, this mountaintop experience, it foreshadowed, it prepared us to deal with the crucifixion of Jesus, that we wouldn't lose hope altogether, that we would be able to come to believe in His resurrection faster because we had this experience to prime us for the resurrection. That this was proof that it, that moment sustained them in the hard road to the cross. What was it in that experience that required so much processing and sinking in and that ripple effect? It's the words from God. Listen to Him. Listen to Him.
when they get to the mountaintop, they're there to experience what is to happen. And what does Peter do? He says, hey, Lord, it's good that we're here. Let us build shelters for all of us to stay in. That's not what they're there to do. This is not a what would you do moment. This is a what does Jesus do moment. What does God do moment. And the voice from God when Moses and Elijah disappear and the cloud descends, the voice from God from the cloud is to listen to him. It is a moment that they wrestle with through the rest of the gospel that has ripple effects. Listen to him. We see that immediately because they come down the mountain, they get to a village, and they can't cast out the demon from the young man. And the father's like, Can you, you come to Jesus? You're, my son is having these, these fits. He's possessed. Your disciples can't cast out. I can't help. Can you do anything? And Jesus expresses his frustration. and casts out the demon, rebukes the demon. The demon listens to Jesus, not the disciples. So two things to conclude on. Look at those moments in your life when you have encountered God. We spent this season of Advent doing God sightings. Look at those God sightings in your life. Savor those moments. Revisit them. And look for the ripple effects in your life of those God sightings, those moments when you've encountered God. When have you had your epiphanies? And if you're sitting there thinking, I'm not sure if I've had one of those moments, then I would encourage you to pray and ask God, God, show me when you've been there for me. Kind of like the foot poems. There's often times when we're walking along and we think we're all by ourselves, doing it by ourselves when it's really God carrying us. And we don't realize it until we look in the rearview mirror and say, oh, wait. Right there when I thought I was alone, God was actually with me. Ask God to reveal those moments to you. And then look for the ripple effects. And then listen to those ripples and how God continues to love you and sustain you. This is important. It sustains us for the journey ahead. especially in a world filled with so much turmoil and division and so much need for love. And then the last thing. As we listen and we look for those ripple effects, as we seek to be nourished by those ripple effects from those moments when we encounter God, those epiphany moments, mountaintop moments, God is with us. We hear Jesus' frustrations with his disciples that they're still not getting it. And yet, what does Jesus do? He still heals the young man. He still continues to travel with his disciples. They all continue to go to Jerusalem. Yeah, he's frustrated, but he continues to love them and sustain them and show his power. So too, God continues with us to walk with us as we take time to look for the ripples of his love in our lives and to follow him. Amen.
Let us confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace, hear our prayer. The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, cannons, canyons, carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tides. God of grace, hear our prayer. You love justice and establish equity. Strengthen leaders of local governments, community nonprofits, and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creative, creativity, and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heal those who are in distress, especially all those affected by the pandemic and all those we name out loud or in our hearts at this time. People of Ukraine. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this change of season. Pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to our worship life. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Blessed are they who listen to Christ's voice in this life and now rest with him, especially Dot Hofer. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your peace that we do not lose heart. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. Uh, if you had not done so before the service, um, you can do so uh, at the end of the service or after the congregational meeting, uh, leave an offering in the offering plate uh, towards the back of the sanctuary. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us praise. Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the blessing. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Amen.
Thanks be to God.